I don't think we want to show that to the minister. Um, but the, the interesting thing about this stuff is how much of it comes true. It really does. Some of those things are true already, like the music function. We've already changed many of the ways we do things, banking, working. You can deposit checks just by taking their picture. There are no more paper tickets when you travel. I do all my reading on my iPhone. And for lots of us, this change is scary. And it should be. It's change that, to a degree that people have never seen before. As a reaction, most people prefer to walk backwards into the future. It's a posture that may be uncomfortable, but at least it allows us to look at familiar things as long as possible. Now, what happens when you do that, of course, is you get hit by the truck of change. And the danger is that the fear of change often leads us to rush to blindly protect things that we know and value. Great example, books. How many of you love books? I hope it's all of you. But books are quickly moving to electronic form, as you all know, and audio form, reading with your ears. And it's likely that in our students' lifetimes, certainly the lifetimes of our younger students, books will move from the bookshelf like this to what I saw in a hotel room, a painting of a book. That's just a painting of a bookshelf. Just like we have paintings of things we used to love like horses and other things. And a lot of people get upset when they hear about this. Because they say, I love the feel of books. I love the smell of books. How many of you feel that way? <laughs> of course, of course. Of course, 100 years ago, if I were saying this, you would be saying, I love the feel of horses. I love the smell of horses. As we made that change and transition, which we managed to do. But for those of you who feel this way, I have a something for you. I have a present for you. It's this. Feel it. Smell it. Be my guest. You like the old ones better? Feel them. Smell them. What you like about books is not the feel in this. You might like that a little bit. That's fine. What you like about books is what's in the book. It's the ideas. It's the stories. That's what we need to pass down to our children. Not books themselves. We're breaking our kids' backs with textbooks that they have to carry. That's what we need to be teaching our children, that it's the stories, it's the content that's important. And the question is, do we have the courage to do things like that? Do we have the courage to help our students abandon physical books? That's really important, because that's part of what teaching is going to be about. That's why it's such a wrenching transition. This is a book called Rainbow's End, and it says, if we want to get to where we'd like to, where all the books are connected, and all the books are scanned, and all the books are searchable, maybe we have to shred all the books to scan them. How many of you would accept that? How many of you would accept shredding all our books and getting rid of all our physical books, but still having them all connected electronically? I don't see a lot of hands. That's our problem. That's really the problem, the danger. The fear of change leads us to do what we're doing right, blindly protect what we know and value. But what we really need to do is seek the good in the changes and adapt them to our purpose, which is education. Can we move to the new context of the world? Do we have the courage? That's a big, important question. Because we're totally out of practice in adapting. This is a caveman who comes on TV to advertise in the US. The problem is most of us haven't seen much change. We sure, we've been to the moon, we've been to Mars as a society, but we live in the same houses. We drive the same cars to basically to the same jobs, to the same buildings. We build an auditorium. This is a beautiful auditorium, but it looks just like an old auditorium. Things didn't change much until the end of the last century when we started to have some change with digital technology. And now we're here, but from now on, folks, we're going to see this. We're going to see exponential change. What's interesting 
is that while we know the slow part and suddenly we have this exponential change, our students only know the exponential change. They only know that machines get new features every three months and take huge leaps and move and the technology is really going. And they're going to see that we switch from gasoline cars to electric cars. They're going to see huge, huge changes in their lifetime. How many of you have sent an email? I assume most of you have. Email, of course, as you know, is for old people. Right? That's what the kids say. There are kids who say, the only person I still email is my mother. Right? But more importantly, that's not what's so important. What's important is that this was a headline in an important paper, the Chronicle of Higher Education, that goes to educators. And what they said was that those universities and colleges had spent enormous amounts of money putting in infrastructure so that the kids could have EDU or email addresses from the school, and now the kids are not using them because they've all moved to text. We guessed wrong. Gee. But that guess, that wrong guess, that wrong bet on technology cost huge amounts of money that we could have spent on other things.